Hello again. Welcome back to Holy Wednesday. We are at day 37 of Lent of 2022, reading through Pastor Phil Ressler's book, 40 Things to Give Up for Lent and Beyond. And today we're talking about giving up selfish ambition. You've been told that you can do anything if you set your mind to it. If you work hard enough and you have enough ingenuity, creativity, and imagination, the sky is the limit, you've probably been told. Nothing's impossible. You can do it. This is the very fabric of what is known as the American dream, and we actually call it that here in Canada too, uh, somewhat sardonically. Uh, it's about becoming a self-made man or woman. Canada, and, and to a much greater extent, the United States, was founded as a land of opportunity, a place where through hard work and ingenuity, you have the freedom to achieve your dreams. All sounds great. However, one must be careful to tread lightly because there are subtle dangers that lurk. Such talk easily sets us up for disillusionment or worse. While there are many great success stories, there are also tales of epic failure. Pastor Ressler wanted to become a professional baseball player. Oh, dreamed of it, worked for it, practiced hard, wanted to play for the Chicago Cubs, lead them to their first world championship series in over a hundred years. It never happened. God led him elsewhere. His dream did not work out. Sometimes we're left on the outside looking in. Another danger is that we replace God's desire for us with our dream. You know, our dream becomes about giving attention to our accomplishments. We want the big house, not because we necessarily need the big house. We want the fancy car, not because we need the fancy car. We want them because they're status symbols. They show others that we've made it. They show off how successful we have become. As one person has said, we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. And that dream, pursuing that dream, becomes a new religion that we passionately pursue. In this new religion, God becomes a means to an end. He's there to help us accomplish our dream. And the God we worship is ourselves. Our mission is not bringing about and accomplishing God's dream, but accomplishing our own. There are many Bible verses that talk about how we can do all things and how we can ask for whatever we want and it will be given to us. These are promises, but we have to remember the premises that come before the promises. We need to remember what the promises are about. The first thing to remember is that the promises of God are about him. Many years ago, when I was learning how to run things like session meetings and congregational meetings and things like that, a wise professor told me, remember to have God in the room mentally and spiritually the whole time. Don't invoke him in the beginning, then send him out into the hallway to sit and wait until the end of the meeting, and then bring him in to bless what you've decided to do. Make the starting point God's plans. Consider what God is doing, how he is moving. Take a few moments, consider where God is at work. Maybe write it down. And as we consider where God is at work, ask ourselves how we can join him and be part of what he's already doing. This is not about asking God to come alongside us. This is about coming alongside God where he is already at work. Second thing to remember is that God's promises are all about community. 
Many of the promises in Scripture are not given to individuals, but to the community. The translation of Matthew 6, verse 33 reads, Seek first the kingdom of God and his, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Great promise that all these things will be given, but don't miss the premise with the promise. An accurate translation is not you, singular, seek first the kingdom of God. The translation is properly rendered you, all seek the kingdom of God. The promise is given to the community called the church as it collectively pursues its mission. Third, the promises of God are about his mission. Another thing about the, the premises on the promises is that they're focused on overcoming for the sake of God's mission. In Philippians 4, verse 13, Paul talks about how he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. But he was not talking about accomplishing ambitious dreams or goals that he had set. At the time, he was in prison because he was preaching the gospel. His reference so was so that he could endure his prison sentence, which was a result of the calling placed upon his life. That idea of an American dream, a, a dream to, to bring about, seems very appealing. But as we dig deeper, we discover that God's dream will trump our dream every time. We discover that all our accomplishments in this world don't amount to very much. In comparison, Jesus has accomplished immeasurably more than we could ever imagine. There's nothing greater we can draw attention to than drawing attention to Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, help us to lay down ourselves at the foot of your cross and take up the things that you intend for us. Too often, it was said, as was said, we get caught up in our dreams, in our selfish ambitions, and we stop listening to you, and we stop caring about what you want for us. So silence the yammering of our hearts and return us to a place of quiet trust and understanding. We ask in Jesus' name.